This morning we consider Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13, Jesus' parable of the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. We hear Jesus' warning to us to be awake and prepared, and then we consider how God prepares us through his word and sacrament. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Many of the richest treasures that the church owns are the hymns that we sing. In the year 1597, actually the winter of 97-98, the Black Plague came to a German town called Una in Westphalia. There a man, a pastor by the name of Philip Nicolai, spent that winter burying 1,300 of his parishioners. Sometimes 30 funerals a day, 170 people a week. The Black Death just devastated the community. He spent the time when he wasn't burying people comforting the grieving. And as you can imagine, with such a load of death, and him being a pastor and dealing with the grief that came with that death, from 1,300 souls who went to heaven, he spent a great deal of time and energy in the scripture. And not just in the scripture, but in those portions of the scripture that talk about the second coming of Christ. Because there is so much joy and consolation in those scriptures for Christians. Because at the time of the second coming, all of those who are in faith, who are actively living for the Lord, who are filled with the Spirit of God in word and sacrament, will be taken, as Paul says in our text today, up into heaven. Well, Pastor Nikolai, at one point during that winter, wanted to encourage his parishioners, and so he read, wrote a, do, a devotional book called Freudenspiegel, which, as you all know, who speak German, Mirror of Joy. The Mirror of Joy. Two hymns went into the appendix of that hymn. Two well-known hymns. One we just sang. Wake, awake, for night is flying. And he incorporates into that hymn part of the, of the parable that we look at today. The midnight cry, awake calls the watchman awake. As we confess our faith immediately before our sermon today, we in the second article of the Apostles' Creed confessed concerning Jesus that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. There are two thoughts in that phrase. He will come again. And he will judge. In chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus tells us the signs of his coming again. As we begin chapter 25, he begins to tell us about his judgment. And the first way that he does that is with a story about ten bridesmaids, ten virgins. He divides them equally, five were wise and five were foolish. And it's based on their actions in the parable that determines their wisdom or their foolishness. And it has to do with the oil in their lamps and their preparedness to meet the bridegroom. Now, the Old Testament imagery of weddings was very familiar to people as, as it is today. Although marriages happened in a little bit of a different way, in the Old Testament and in the time of Jesus in the first century. In fact, John the Baptist in chapter 3 of John's Gospel refers to Jesus as the bridegroom and to himself as the best man. Well, how were these marriages done at that time? What took place was dad, I suppose every good father, consulted his wife. And he would go out 
and find a bride for his son. He would select the woman. He would get an agreement from her family. They would seal a contract and a dowry would be exchanged. An oath was taken and they would be considered husband and wife. They weren't in every way husband and wife, but so firm were the bonds of betrothal that it was an almost done deal. That's how it was with Mary and Joseph in the Gospel of Luke. Well, at a certain prearranged time, when the wedding would take place, the bridegroom would take his groomsmen and he would leave his home that he had prepared for his wife. And he would walk in a festal procession to the home of the bride. And there the maidens, the virgins, would be on alert and looking for the coming of the groom. Well, in Jesus' parable, the groom delayed. He delayed and it got later and darker and into the evening and all of the maidens fell asleep. And then came the cry at midnight. Wake it up, awaken. For the bridegroom is here. Everyone come out and meet him. And they would get up and they would trim the char off of their lamps and they would light their lamps and they would go out to meet the procession. And they would have escorted into the bridal home. And then they would follow in the procession along with the bride to the groom's house where there would be a wonderful banquet. And after the banquet, the bride and groom would begin their new lives together. Well, as we look at the parable today, we see many of those elements in Jesus' illustration. Jesus talks about the bridegroom coming in the festal procession. He talks about the maidens, the bridesmaids, being called at the late hour and getting up and trimming their lamps. Probably not the little oil lamps, the clay lamps that we so often might picture in that, that imagery, but an outdoor lamp, more of a torch, where rags were ripped around and the char cut off and they were soaked in oil and they would light up the night in a torchlight procession. Of course, those oil rags would only burn about 15 minutes, so you had to take extra oil in order to make the entire procession back to the groom's home. In the parable, when the bridesmaids wake up, five of those bridesmaids discover that their oil has burned out and that they have nothing to re-wet the rags on their torch with. And they say to the other bridesmaids, give us some of your oil. Well, they say no, in a very kind way. They say, we can't because if we share with you, we won't have enough to complete the procession. You run now over to the oil cellars, get yourself some oil, and get back here for the festival procession. But as they take off running, in the distance appears the bridegroom. And the wise bridesmaids go out and meet him. <coughs> the foolish ones miss him entirely. And they take the bridal procession back to the groom's home. And they go into the home and the doors are shut and bolted. And so when the other five foolish virgins arrive, they knock on the door. Lord, Lord, they cry, let us in. But they're late and they were unprepared. This is where Jesus draws our attention in the parable because while a party might very well let latecomers in, Jesus says here they are not getting in. The Lord calls out to them, Depart from me, I don't know you. Of course, elsewhere in the scripture, we know that Jesus says in another one of his illustrations, not everyone who calls to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. 
And in the parable in Matthew 22, using another wedding illustration, everyone is invited, but only those with wedding clothes are permitted to be at the wedding banquet. The ladies had helped the bride prepare. The ladies had done everything to get ready. They had even prepared themselves for the festive procession. But when it came time to go with the bridegroom, their lamps were dry. The oil was gone. Now what is the oil? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it faith? Is it living a Christ-filled life for the glory of God? I think the answer to that is yes. It's all of the above. Because as we are in Word and Sacrament regularly, feeding on the Word, studying the Word, hearing the Word proclaimed in its purity, we are growing stronger in faith and the Holy Spirit is working in and through that means to strengthen the faith in our hearts, to draw us closer to Christ, to enable us to walk in that Christ-like manner. As we are regularly receiving the Lord's sacrament, the Lord is forgiving our sins and strengthening our faith and enabling us to focus and prepare for the glory that comes. It's not something, of course, that we do. Faith doesn't originate within us. But it's something that's gifted to us through the cross of Christ, through His atoning death, and through His glorious resurrection. It might be Sunday brunch, might be sleeping in on a Sunday morning. It might be sporting events. It might be any number of things that could keep us away from the Word. Many in Christ's family have fallen asleep in faith, become lax, and have separated themselves from the Word of God and its proclamation and its study. And their faith grows weaker and weaker and dimmer and dimmer. Others, others come regularly. But perhaps the routine of it or, or just the fact that we're tired in the morning, our minds and our hearts aren't open and we don't hear and become actively involved in everything that's taking place. It's very easy for us, isn't it, to get lax and fall asleep in faith. I've done it, you've done it. And it's so hard, isn't it, once we've not only fallen asleep, but slid away, to find the desire to get back to it. Because the more we're separated from the Word of God, the less desire we have to be involved in the Word of God. And so Jesus gives us a warning today. Now remember, the warning is not, is not anything except be alert. Don't let your faith grow lax. Be involved in the Word of Christ. Receive the gifts that God has to give regularly the rich and overflowing gifts of God that He has prepared in abundance for you and for me and His church. Because you and I are the watchful church. You and I are those who are on the wall looking, straining throughout the night to see the bridegroom when He appears. And He will appear. It may seem like it's a long time waiting it may seem like it's taking forever for him to get here, but he will come and he will judge. He will come and judge all people. Now it might be easy, or I should say easier, to ignore the warning if Jesus were speaking to a mixed crowd of disciples and Jewish leaders in the temple. It might be easier to ignore the warning if he were speaking in some general way to Gentiles and Jews. But today in the scripture, he is speaking to us. 
in the intimate, closed circle of his disciples. He's speaking to us and he says, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. So, how is it that we should keep watch? How is it that God has prepared for us to be actively involved in His Word? Well, we're told in the third commandment, aren't we, that we should, uh, that we should remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, that we should treasure the Word and honor the Word, that we should not despise the Word or preaching, but to hold it sacred. God is provided through the power of His Word. As we open it in Bible study, and we look at it, whether at church, after, after worship, whether at our homes, in private devotion, whether in a home Bible study group, that we should be engaged in that Word. Because it's in connection with that Word that the Spirit of God brings the power of salvation, and that you and I are kept safe in the arms of Christ. Or finally this morning, <coughs> finally this morning, we're reminded once again as baptized children of God that we should gather around the sacrament which He prepares on the altar for us. And there coming in humble devotion with penitent hearts, receive in, with, and under that bread and wine the very body and blood of Christ for our salvation, the forgiveness of our sins, the strengthening of our faith. God has provided for you and me in His church in great abundance. In His overflowing love, the gracious bridegroom has provided. And now He says, I am coming. I am coming. And what will that coming look like finally this morning? Paul tells us all about it when he talks of the Thessalonians. When his coming arrives, we will not mistake it. He will appear in the air. There will be the sound of the trumpet of the archangel of God. And there will be the resurrection of all flesh. And those who have died in faith, who have gone ahead, will be raised first. And then we who are alive will be raised into the air to join them and the Lord in the clouds. What a great and glorious day it will be. A time of joy and celebration. Saints triumphant. What will it be but the promise fulfilled? The invitation to the wedding has been given. The bridegroom has called you. The wedding feast is set in heaven. And the rehearsal dinner is now prepared upon the altar, which we rehearse each Sunday. And one day soon, he will come. He will come for you. So don't be like the foolish virgins who had let their faith run dry, who knocked on the door, whose seats were prepared at the table, but sat empty. But with God's gracious love and care, be in the Word. Receive the sacrament. Join the wedding rehearsal there. And when that day comes, you will be with Christ. You will be with Him in the clouds. You and I together will be dressed in wedding clothes and set at the banquet table where we will enjoy the finest affair. And you and I, triumphant in Christ, will be with the Lord forever. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Blessed Heavenly Bridegroom, as we, your bride, the church, journey through these latter days, don't allow our vigilance to slip nor our hearts to grow drowsy because you seem to be taking a long time. Keep us ever watchful for your coming that we may sit with you 
and with all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. For blessed are they who are called to the marriage feast of the Lamb. Come, Lord Jesus, and keep us, your saints, watchful for our triumph. Amen. We stand for a blessing. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you'd like to hear more on this topic or any other, please contact us or join us Sunday mornings for worship at 9 o'clock, Bible class at 10.30.